What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the new features in the updated version of Procedural Crowds for Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we've talked about Procedural Crowds in the past, um, and it was actually pretty popular um, for good reason. Um, it's a very powerful tool that allows you to quickly add groups of crowds and groups of people into your scenes, whether they're standing around, um, whether they're seated and um, in like stadiums, other things like that. Um, super powerful tool um, that allows you to use their built-in models, or you can also add your own. But they've just rolled out a new version with a couple new features that I wanted to take a look at. Okay, so the first thing to note about this is it's basically an asset update. What that means is it's gonna come with a, it it's gonna come with the installer file as well as a folder of assets. Um, so if you already had this installed, you don't need to reinstall it in order to get it to work. You just need to unzip that new assets file and make sure that you've linked to that assets folder inside of your um, in, inside of your add-ons tab right here. So once you link to that updated assets folder, which you've unzipped, then these additional options are going to show up in here, like the on vertices option. Okay, so first off, um, one of the cool things they've added is the ability to place models on vertices, right? So the rest of these we already had, but the on vertices basically gives you the ability to add people or crowds wherever you have a vertex. So let's say that I was to tab into edit mode and I was to extrude this vertex out. Notice what this is doing is this is placing people on every single vertex that we have in here. So this can be a power this can be a powerful thing, not only for coming in here and adding um, adding people like this, but also if you have meshes. So let's say that I had a plane like this one. I'm going to move it over, scale it up, and we're just going to split it up in here a little bit like this. Right, so we can go ahead and we can take these people and we want to make sure that we apply our rotation and scale, but we can add a crowd to a surface like this one. And so not only does that give you the ability to add people to the surface like this, you could also come in here and you could remove some of them out if you decided that you didn't want them there, um, other things like that. So you can use this to really quickly kind of like focus in where people are standing. So notice how you could use this to add people in lines or one of my favorite applications for this is say that you've got a surface like this one, you can use it in order to quickly generate a stadium full of people um, with a lot more control. Right, so we've used the stadium function before, but the on vertices is gonna give you the ability to add that crowd in here. So if I add the crowd and hold on, it's gonna get more interesting in a second. First thing, we wanna make sure that these are set to a one or actually to a two, um, because then they're gonna be in the stadium and they're gonna be mostly seated. But notice if I was to come in here and I was to add a subdivision surface modifier in here and move it up above that procedural crowd. Notice how I can use this in order to quickly add people models to specific areas. And if I was to tab into edit mode, let's say that there were some areas where you didn't want people, right? It's so like this. You could come in here, you could tap the X key and delete those vertices and notice how the people are going to be placed wherever your geometric detail is. And again, these are all seated. Um, I guess some of them are standing, but um, these are all characters that are now seated in this stadium. And we can even bump this subdivision up more and notice how it's gonna place even more people in here. So you can use this in order to really quickly place a bunch of people in areas specifically where you want them to be. And so in addition, they've also added the ability to have your crowds that are using the follow curve function move in multiple directions. So notice how I can set switch direction like this, if I set it to zero, they're gonna go one way. If I set it to one, they're gonna go the other way. If I set it to like 0.5, then half the people are gonna go one way, half the people are going to go the other way. And then you can also set the spacing between the people in here like this. So if you don't want this to be like super um, tight or anything like that, you can set your lateral spacing a little bit more, or you can kind of bring this together in order to get this just kind of like random crowd moving together. But now you have the ability to randomize people walking in different directions. Notice how you can use the seed in order to kind of adjust where those people are along this path. But if you want to simulate crowds of people that are kind of walking, um, they're, they're all kind of walking in the same space, but different directions, that's now easy to do with the follow 
curve function. All right, and so one last piece, which I haven't quite figured out how to demo in my model, so I'm just gonna go to their video, but basically they've added a little bit of a randomization to the clothing color of the different models in here. So what that means is even if you get the same model in here, because it is reusing the same, I think 20 models or so with the built-in stuff, it is still going to kind of randomize the color in here of those different characters in order to um, still give you kind of that variation, um, allowing you to have a little bit more varied crowd. And note that all of these are in addition to the crowd types we already had. So like the audience, the circular audience, and things like the march, which allow you to create a group of people marching along a path like this. So overall, added some additional features to an already cool add-on. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you've tried procedural crowds yet. I just love having that conversation with you guys. Still working on the video where you bring in the custom models. It is on my to-do list. But let me know if you have any questions. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.